Hi, it's Logan from sleepopolis.com, and today I'm going to be comparing the Nectar versus Casper mattresses. Now, if you've been searching for mattress reviews on YouTube or taking the subway to work, you've probably seen ads for both the Nectar and the Casper. These are two bed-in-a-box, all-foam mattresses. They have really different feels thanks to the differences in materials used. The Nectar leans heavily on the memory foam use for sinking in pressure relief, while the Casper has more of a balanced foam feel to it. I'm going to be comparing the materials used, differences in feel, and some recommendations for the Casper and Nectar mattress today. But if you want full deep dives into any mattress that we've reviewed, you can just Google Sleepopolis and mattress reviews to check the full listing there. But for right now, let's put the Nectar and Casper mattresses head to head. So I want to start out the comparison talking a little bit about the materials used in the construction of these mattresses. So I'll start with the Nectar mattress, which is an all foam mattress standing 11 inches in height. Now the cover of the Nectar is a tensile and cotton blend. Tensile is a natural material that's known for being pretty breathable. Also, I want to point out in the cover, there is a quilted layer of gel memory foam there for immediate pressure relief and comfort right off the bat. One thing you'll hear me say a couple of times is that memory foam is known for trapping a bit of body heat, causing you to overheat a little bit while you're sleeping. So they've included a gel infusion in this layer to help draw heat away from the sleeper, help you sleep a little bit cooler. Now below the cover, there is a three inch layer of memory foam. And below that, there is another inch layer of memory foam. So on top of the nectar, there's five total inches of memory foam. That's gonna really allow you to sink into the mattress. As you lay on memory foam, the pressure from your body and a little bit of your body heat causes you to sink in. You're gonna get that contouring feel around your body, a little bit of a hug. There is a slow response to pressure, so not too much bounce to the nectar, but you're really gonna be able to sink in for pressure relief, which is especially nice for side sleepers. Now below all that memory foam, there is a six inch high density polyfoam base. Now this is a really common material found in a lot of foam mattresses. It's a firm material that's meant to support the layers of foam on top of the mattress, as well as to the sleeper. Now let's talk about the Casper mattress, which is also an all foam construction. This one's standing 10 inches in height. Now the cover of the Casper is polyester. I found it to be pretty breathable. The top layer or the comfort layer of the mattress is a latex-like foam. Latex foams are known for being pretty bouncy, so a quicker response to pressure, as well as doing a good job of dissipating body heat. Now the layer below that is kind of a contouring layer of memory foam for a bit of pressure relief. By placing the latex-like layer over the memory foam, it does a couple things, including uh, defending against kind of some of that body heat trap and memory foam I talked about before, as well as avoiding kind of a stuck feeling in the mattress. So you should be able to change positions a bit better thanks to that latex-like foam. Now below the memory foam on the Casper, there is a bit of a transition layer. It's a polyfoam layer for a little bit added support. However, it is a zone support, so there's two different polyfoams in that layer. Around the hips, it's a bit firmer to help keep them from sinking in, keep your hips from sinking into the mattress too much. However, around the shoulder area, it's a bit softer to allow you to sink in so you get more of a spine alignment, especially when you're lying on your side there. At the base of the Casper is a high density polyfoam base like we saw with the Nectar. It's that firm material that provides overall support. Now that we've seen what makes up these mattresses, it's time to get an idea for the feel and firmness of them. I'm gonna start with the Nectar mattress, which in my opinion has kind of a medium firmness, maybe a six to six and a half out of 10 on the firmest scale with 10 being the firmest. Now with all that memory foam on top, you're really gonna be able to sink into the mattress. When you first lie down on memory foam, you might feel an initial firmness to it, but as you lay there, the pressure from your body, the body heat causes you to sink in. It's gonna give you that contouring feeling around your body as you're sinking in. Now with all that space to sink into the mattress, that's gonna be a really big plus for side sleepers because you're gonna have more space to sink into the mattress before you hit a firm layer that can kind of jam up your shoulders, your hips. You see a lot of side sleepers complain about pressure points forming the shoulders or the hips. All that memory foam on top of the nectar is gonna be really good for that. Now the memory foam has that slow response to pressure causing the nectar to have a low bounce. So you, if you roll around in the middle of the night, try to change positions, you might get a little, a little bit of a stuck feeling on the nectar. So you gotta watch out for that. Uh, now again, that sinking in feeling, that contouring around your body is gonna be really good for a lot of side sleepers, probably some back sleepers like that as well. However, if you are a strict stomach sleeper, you might wanna be careful because your hips are gonna sink into the mattress, which could cause you to wake up with some aches and pains in the lower back. Now let's talk about the Casper mattress, which in my opinion also has kind of a medium firmness to it, maybe six and a half to seven out of 10 on the firmness scale. So just a bit firmer than the Nectar, but not by much. Now again, it has kind of that balanced foam feel to it. It combines that latex-like foam 
over the memory foam. So you do sink in a little bit for pressure relief, but you're still able to change positions, roll around. I definitely don't feel stuck when changing positions on the Casper. Now, the transition layer of the Casper, again, is that zone support system. So you have stronger support underneath your hips to keep them from sinking in, while also softer support, kind of that gentler pressure relief at the shoulders to allow you to sink in when you're on your side, help with spine alignment. Now, the uh, good mobility on the mattress, thanks to that latex-like layer, combined with the balanced feel and the medium firmness, makes the Casper kind of a good mattress for combo sleepers, in my opinion. Now, I do want to point out that Casper actually has two other mattress options available. There's the Casper Essential, which has a bit of a lower profile. It's three layers of foam. It's still the latex-like foam over memory foam, this time over a high-density polyfoam, so there's no zone support. It's a bit less expensive, kind of a value option with the queen-size version coming in at $600. Now, there's also the Casper Wave, which has a bit more of a plush feel to it. It's five layers of foam. It has zone support, so there's actually channels cut into the support layer of the mattress to allow your shoulders to sink in, and then a gel support system underneath your hips to keep those from sinking too far into the mattress. This is a bit more expensive, kind of a luxury option, with the queen-size version coming in at $2,250. Now, a big part of what it feels like to lie on any mattress is whether you're going to feel like you're sitting on top of or really sinking into the mattress. So whenever I test any mattress, I set up the sinkage test in which I use four balls of varying sizes, weights, and densities, simulate different body parts, and check to see how far into the mattress they sink. Now, I have a six-pound medicine ball. It's with the sand. It simulates kind of a lighter body part. And on both the Nectar and Casper mattresses, it sinks in about one inch. That's pretty much the average for every mattress that I test, especially in the bed-in-a-box market. I have a 10 pound steel ball. It's the densest ball used during this test. And on the Nectar mattress, I found that it sunk in two inches compared to an inch and a half on the Casper. Two inches is kind of the average when I do this test. So there's a little bit less sinkage there for the Casper mattress. With a 50 pound medicine ball, it's filled with sand. Same way it's kind of a heavier body part. Think like your shoulders, your hips. On the Nectar, I was pretty surprised. There's only three and a half inches of sinkage there. So you're kind of still in that memory foam area there. On the Casper, it sinks in four inches, so you're getting into kind of that transition layer of the softer polyfoam towards the shoulders. There's probably a little bit less sinkage over the uh, firmer polyfoam that's there under the hips, thanks to that zone support system. I'd say four inches is kind of the average for kind of the foam bed in a box market when I do this test. And then there's a 100-pound mess ball. It's filled with sand. If you're a bit bigger, it simulates kind of the center of your body. Now, for the uh, nectar mattress, I found six inches of sinkage, which is kind of the average. Then for the Casper mattress, there's five and a half inches of sinkage for this 100 pound medicine ball. Uh, you get kind of to that high density polyfoam a little bit faster on the Casper mattress, a little bit of a taller uh, layer there. So a little bit less sinkage for the 100 pound medicine ball on the Casper mattress. Still five and a half to six inches for that ball is kind of the average. But because of the differences in materials used, the Nectar will have a bit more sinkage. You're gonna feel a bit more in the mattress thanks to all that memory foam, that slow response pressure, that contouring around your body, as opposed to the Casper, which has that latex-like quick response pressure, a little bit more bounce to it. You're gonna be able to change positions a little bit easier. So you're definitely gonna feel more kind of sunken into the Nectar than you will on the Casper mattress. Now, I just wanted to give you some basic information about both the Nectar and Casper mattresses. They both offer trial periods, with the Nectar offering a 365-day trial period and Casper offering a 100-day trial period. Now, Casper was one of the first kind of big names on the scene, so they helped set the industry standard, which is kind of that 100-day trial period that's pretty much on average for a lot of these bed-in-a-box companies. So the Nectar 365-day trial, trial period is pretty long in the market. There's also the warranty for both. It's a kind of a lifetime warranty for the Nectar, as well as a 10-year warranty for the Casper. Again, 10 years kind of the industry standard when you're checking out bed -to box mattresses, so the Nectar has a really long warranty. Now, in terms of shipping, they both ship free and will arrive compressed in a box, so no difference there. Uh, now, in terms of price, the Nectar does come in at a little bit less expensive, with the queen-size version coming in at $699, well, where the queen-size version of the Casper comes in at $995. I really like both the Nectar and Casper mattresses. They're both big names in the industry because they have quality products. But to give you some general recommendations, really like the Nectar for that memory foam feel. If you really like that classic memory foam feel, sinking into the mattress, 
kind of contouring that hug around your body, the Nectar is a great choice for you. And because of all that memory foam, I think it's really great for side sleepers. Now, like I mentioned before, side sleepers can have issues with pressure points forming at the shoulders and the hips when you sink into a mattress and maybe hit kind of that firmer layer on a mattress, you get jammed up at the shoulders. By being able to sink all that way into the Nectar, it's really great for side sleepers to avoid those pressure points forming. Now, I really like the Casper for that zoned support system. It's getting a little bit more common in the bed in a box market, but it's still really nice to see on the Casper so that you can kind of get that support underneath your hips, a little bit more sinkage area in your shoulders. I also really like it for combo sleepers because it has that quicker response to pressure from that latex-like foam on top. You're really able to change positions. You're not gonna feel stuck in the Casper at all. Those are some really general recommendations, but if you are looking for a more personal recommendation, please feel free to leave a note in the comment section below with some information about yourself, some of your sleep references. I'll be sure to get back to you. Also, please subscribe to the Sleepopolis YouTube channel as we're gonna keep putting out more content that's gonna help you get a better night's sleep. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the Sleepopolis Facebook and Twitter pages so you don't miss any of our new reviews, any of our sleep news, or any of our giveaway announcements. So that's it for the comparison today. I hope it was helpful. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm.